Dirty Harry, these kind of, this, uh, I, I evoke the, the Western, the Shane, Searchers, Magn these are all Westerns that a lot of people don't watch today, but the, the, the motif is always the same. You bring in this gunslinger and you're kind of, he's fearless, he has these ability to beat the enemy, the bad guys, but as he starts to bring civilization back or normality back, people start to second guess him. And that's what's happening with Trump. He's, so He's a Manhattan, Queens accented developer with a strange hairstyle and skin color. And he doesn't play the game. If he goes to the Indiana State Fair or he goes to Tulare, California or the South, it's the same Queens accent, same suit, just like you have on or I have on. Hillary doesn't do that. She's got a Southern accent here, an inner city accent here. John Kerry, when he ran, he had flannel at the, at the state fair. Trump is authentic. He's who he is, he's unapologetic. He's also empathetic. Our farmers, our vets, and he goes to West Virginia. Hillary goes to West Virginia and she says, I'm sorry, you guys have to basically learn solar skills or something. I'm going to put you out of business. Trump goes and says, I love big, beautiful coal. I think people thought two things when they nominated and elected Trump. They said the economy is stagnant, no 3% annualized GDP in 10 years, no gain in real wages. They've written off the middle of the country. They're losers. They can't, they're not part of the globalized elite on the coast. So this guy comes along and says, I'm your Republican, but I'm not your Republican. I'm for low taxes, defense spending, get rid of Obamacare, oil production, but I want to restore the interior of the country by forcing people to tr treat us like we treat them, whether it's Europe or Mexico or Asia, whatever. And then he says, I gotta close the border because it drives down wages and we, we've lost our sovereignty unless immigration is legal, measured, meritocratic. I'm not going to campaign like Mitt Romney and John McCain. I'm not going to play by the markers of Queensbury rules. And he's, the message to people were, was, if I had been John McCain, Reverend Wright would have been on TV 24-7. If I had been in the debate with Mitt Romney and Candy Crawley and Barack Obama, and she had joined the opposition as moderator, I would have stopped the debate and walked out. So whether you like me or not, it's not going to be that way. We hadn't seen that since Lee Atwater tore apart Mike Dukakis in 1988 for George H.W. Bush. Everybody who's got into an argument with him, who usually start, even John McCain started the argument when he said Trump is bringing out the crazies. Trump then attacked him quite unfairly about his military and then they were off to the races. Elizabeth Warren attacked him and then he did the Focahontas and the DNA. she ended up on the... Definitely the losing end of that one, right? I think little Marco and low energy Jeb did. So the, the message is he's a coiled snake and you don't step on him because he believes he has to bite back no matter who you are. And so far it's pretty clear that he's a lot more um, thinking and plotting and deliberate than we've given him credit for. Because well, yeah, remember we've had, we're a country that lived through, if you have your if you want your doc, you can have your doc. You can keep your insurance plan. That was what Obama told us. Uh, read my lips, no new taxes. There's WMD in Iraq. So the idea was the president can say whatever he wants, we're supposed to believe him. It doesn't mean that Trump doesn't lie or exaggerate. They all do. But what he didn't lie about was, I'm going to try to close the border one way or the other. I'm going to try not to get involved overseas in new adventures. I'm going to try to get manufacturing back. I'm going to try to get GDP up. I'm going to try to s drill more oil and gas. I'm going to try to deregulate. I'm going to try to get judges who are strict construct. And he did. And so now he has a record as we go into 2020. That's all you need to be, better than the alternative, because we're a self-critical society. The second argument he made is this very process of constant self-criticism and self-debasement and apology tours and racist, sexist, is demoralizing to something called the national spirit. So our, when you keep doing that to a society, you can't build the Hoover Dam. You can't build the trans, you can't go to the moon. You can't win World War II because you don't believe that you're any better than the alternative. 
And when societies have done that, Rome in the fifth century or Byzantium in the 15th century, then history says, if you don't believe you're better than the alternative, what's the purpose? You have no reason to, to continue as an exceptional country. So that's what his message really was, that yes, we're flawed, but we're so much better than the alternative that we have to press on and be even better. The American way, when he backed the lawsuit about Asians trying to get into Harvard, I shouldn't say trying to get into Harvard, trying to get into Harvard and being accepted based on their merit in disproportionate numbers. Trump said, fine, if, they all, if Harvard's 100% Asian, what's the difference between that and the NBA being 78% African American? Are we gonna have Asian affirmative action for basketball? That's a very lucrative sport, it's a lot more lucrative than most people that go to Harvard. Ew. Instead, he's more like a bird of prey, and he surveys the horizon. And he says to himself, which issues today will allow me to make a point about Americans' founding and principle? The Covington kids, the Jussie Smollett, the Colin Kaepernick, the Kavanaugh hearings. In each one of these, there are principles of due process, right of cross-examination, presumption of innocence, appreciation for American values, uh, the superiority of integration over separatism or tribalism, and then he pounces like a bird of prey. And people think the president shouldn't have intervened, he shouldn't have said this, but when it's all said and done, in every one of those cases, public opinion tends to be on his side. And incrementally, insidiously, he is empowering people to come forward and saying, you know what, that's fake news. I don't care if you call me a racist. Call me a nationalist, I could care less. So under Obama, we had gone on all of these social issues just at light speed, transgenderism, uh, transgender women in combat, just so quickly that people, through the cultural apparatus that I just talked about, so Trump comes along and says, no, I'm going to attack all of those instances and question all of their premises. Whether it's, the it's an exhausting endeavor. So a man who's 72 years old, who sleeps reported five hours a night, gets up every morning and looks at the world and says, today they will hate me, they will want to blow me up, shoot me, burn me, decapitate me rhetorically, or the Mueller investigation will try to indict my son, my daughter, or they will say terrible things about my wife or my daughter or my son-in-law. And I have to go through the whole day and be told I'm a failure, I'm a buffoon, I'm a liar, and I'm going to be sued. And that's his day. So in a strange way, people are starting to look at him and say, wow. Am I the reason you get stoned every week now? Built up integrity, got you texting, emailing me, wanting me to feel with you. Baby, just face reality, move on. Sometimes it's hard to face reality.